What's poppin' peasants, welcome back to another analysis video. This is the series where I take a closer look at some units from Fire Emblem. In today's video, as you might have guessed, we'll be looking at Isadora from Fire Emblem The Blazing Sword. Isadora is a pre-promoted paladin who joins in the mid-game of Ellie Wood or Hector's story in chapter 21 and 22 respectively. Being a paladin already gives her a significant advantage as it is already an extremely good class with high movement, access to the entire weapon triangle and very good offense with decent defenses. In Isadora's case she trades a bit of durability for more speed, which is where she really shines. Isadora is likely to double most of the enemies on the map very easily and she has a very good damage output due to her respectable strength but also her starting weapons, the silver sword and the short spear. A lot of players claim Isadora is bad because of her low constitution, leading to her being slow despite her high speed stat, however this isn't exactly the case. Like I said she will double most enemies in her joining chapter, her con is 6 and the silver sword only weighs 8, so she only gets hindered by 2, and this can easily be fixed by a body ring if it even really matters. The short spear will weigh her down quite a bit, this can be slightly fixed by swapping her short spear for a javelin as it has a bit less weight. But neither of these weapons' weights will rarely ever noticeably hinder her, except against bosses, as Fire Emblem 7 enemies are pretty slow, especially on lower difficulties. Again, having higher speed is better than having higher constitution. Her durability is admittedly not as good as that of Marcus or a promoted Kent, Sane or Lowen, but she does come with an angelic robe which can increase her hit points to a respectable 35, letting her take another hit or two. And like I mentioned, she comes with a short spear so she immediately has access to ranged weapons, letting her take one less hit on player phase. It's worth mentioning that Isadora doesn't need to use a knight's crest, which is worth 10,000 gold. All the other cavaliers besides Marcus require this to promote, but Isadora comes as a paladin out of the box, with a very good basis to go. She requires very little effort to be good, unlike the other cavs. At this point in the game, there has only also been one Knight's Crest available, and Lowen, Sane, Ken and Oswin will all be in competition for this, depending on who you use. Isadora's growths are pretty average, but she has good speed and luck growths. Her base speed of 16 will only grow more and let her double more reliably through the whole game. I find the argument about her constitution to be a little invalid, as her high speed will make any speed penalties from useful weapons like silvers and ranged basically negligible like I mentioned earlier. Her weapon ranks are good enough to make use of a wide range of weapons except maybe axes where she may get weighed down a bit but she can still do well enough as her speed is good enough and I mentioned before most FE7 enemies are not that fast. It's also fine to give her a couple stat boosters as you're not spending the money on giving her a promotional item. Giving her a Draco shield could be a good idea as it can help patch up her middling defence stat and help her take a few more hits when she's on the front lines. I think the reason why Isadora is a forgettable unit to most players is because she joins last out of all the cavaliers you get in the game, and a lot of players like the satisfaction of training up units that they have raised since the beginning of the game. While I can't argue with that, if you haven't ever tried using Isadora, I highly recommend you do on your next playthrough, as she always takes up a place on my team for every map after she joins, and is a fast, powerful and reliable unit right from the get go. Overall, I'd definitely give Isadora a solid 7 out of 10. She comes as a paladin right away, with good weapon ranks, decent base stats, good weapons, and she doesn't join too late to not make use of. Her growths are good enough to keep her viable through the rest of the game, and she has good availability on the battlefield due to her high movement. As I mentioned in my Franz analysis video, it's never a bad thing to have multiple cavaliers on your team. I think Isadora is definitely worthy of a place on the Paladin squad alongside Marcus and or one of Lowen, Ken or Sane. Even then, if you feel that RNG hasn't been kind to one of those three, Isadora is a very worthy replacement. And that wraps up my analysis on Isadora. I know this one was kind of short compared to my friends video, but I felt I didn't have as much to say as in that video I was comparing four early game cavaliers where with Isadora it didn't feel fair to compare to the other cavaliers too much as her join time is quite significant of a gap. I have a lot of fun making these videos so if there's a character from Fire Emblem you'd like me to take a closer look at leave a comment down below. Thank you for watching, be sure to subscribe and I will see you next time.